Cast your mind back to the mid-2000s and you'll probably remember a time where recommending a hatchback made by Peugeot was probably not a sentence that you could say without setting off a lie detector. Thankfully, the very capable second-generation Peugeot 308 that came on the scene in 2014 has totally changed all of that. And this, the brand new version for 2018, is a facelift that could hardly be described as drastic. So let me take you through what's new. The most noticeable design changes are at the front of the car. There's a new bonnet, the famous Peugeot line has moved on to a redesigned front grille, and there's also a reshaped bumper. At the back, the car's rear lights incorporate Peugeot's LED claw design, and there's another new bumper. Allure GT line and GT models have a panoramic roof as standard. This is the 308 GT line and comes with full LED headlights and 18-inch alloy wheels too. As with the outside of the 308, the changes on the interior are really subtle. It still has the same uncluttered dashboard, tactile materials, keeping the Peugeot in touching distance of the Volkswagen Golf when it comes to interior quality. Now, the dials are still in this quirky position above the steering wheel, which means some drivers might find themselves craning to peer over or under the steering wheel to be able to read them properly. Now, the touchscreen in this 2018 308 is bigger at 9.7 inches, but it keeps the interior of the car feeling quite modern. Now we've got the GT line model here and we are treated to this leather effect of upholstery with red stitching. Along with extra touches like body kit, full LED headlights, and bigger alloy wheels, it does help to give the car an extra sporty feel without buyers having to fork out for the GT or the GTI versions. Now, storage-wise, you have a Pretty average size glove box in here. You've got some space in the central console and a cheeky little hiding spot down here, which is actually quite a deep well. You've also got space down here to hide your phone. And you've also got some fairly decent sized door bins. Every 308 gets the 9.7 inch touchscreen display, which has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Mirror Link, and SatNav. Other standard kit on the entry level access model includes dual zone climate control, the automatic headlights and wipers. The Allure trim adds 17-inch alloys, front and rear parking sensors, powerful folding door mirrors and sports-style front seats. With the GT Line model, you get the sporty styling touches plus tinted rear windows, a reversing camera, scrolling indicators and aluminium door sills and pedals. The GT is top of the standard range and is only available with a powerful diesel or petrol engine plus a lower suspension setup, a driver sports pack and keyless go. We've still got these lovely leather effect seats back here with red stitching, but not so lovely is the leg room. Now I'm five foot six and the driver's seat has been set to my driving position and I am quite restricted with how much space I have for my legs. So some of you taller passengers might find this a little bit squeezy. Headroom, however, is pretty decent. Now, I love the panoramic sunroof. It gives the illusion of so much space when physically you might feel a little bit more confined. Now, you've got some great storage here. You've got a couple of spaces here at the back of the seat. You have a little pocket here at the back of the central console for pocket change. You have a couple of cup holders here in your central armrest, as well as a little ski hatch for those longer items. You also have a couple of Isofix points on each side of the outer seats. And surprisingly large door bins. Now round to the boot, it has become quite clear as to why the leg space has been so restricted in the back. There's definitely been some compromise to offer this vast space in the boot. Now with 470 litres of space on offer, there is quite a lot of room for luggage, but does it pass the car buyer suitcase test? Let's give it a go. That one goes in there. And the space in here is larger than that of the Golf, which only has 380 litres. Now compare that to the 316 litres offered in a Ford Focus, you are laughing all the way to the tip. Now the seats don't fold flat, but with 1,309 litres of space on offer, I still think that's pretty impressive. You can choose between three petrols and four diesels when buying a 308. The pick of the range is the 129 BHP PureTech 130 petrol. It has the same 1.2 litre three-cylinder engine as a PureTech 110, but with some useful extra power. 
There's a 202 bhp 1.6 litre petrol GT model that offers warm hatchback performance, but your fuel bills will reflect the extra power on offer. For those wanting a diesel engine, there are four to choose from. Alpic is the new 128 bhp 1.5 litre blue HGI 130. So we have the PureTech 130 here and the engine is really good. It is easily the best thing about the 308. Peugeot have really cracked it when it comes to building three cylinder turbo engines as they are punchy and refined. I mean, yes, you still get that distinctive three cylinder thrum when you accelerate, but that does settle out quite nicely once you're cruising. It's just a shame that the six speed manual isn't the slickest gearbox around. The 1.5 litre blue HDI 130 diesel is the best of the engine range in economy terms, returning a claimed 80.7 mpg and 93 grams per kilometre of CO2. The entry level PureTech 110 is the most economical petrol, returning 70.6 mpg with CO2 emissions of 95 grams per kilometre. The 308 can be a fun car to drive, but it's clear when you drive it that Peugeot has also kept a keen eye on how comfortable it is. The suspension is relatively soft as a result, making it feel most at home around the town and where it absorbs bumps and potholes nicely. If you're happy to sacrifice some of the serenity for improved cornering ability, the GT model comes with lowered suspension setup, which strikes a good balance between comfort and handling. Like most cars, the 308 does begin to feel less composed on rough surface roads when you opt for the bigger wheels. So the GT Line model gets the 18 inch alloys and while they look amazing next to the smaller wheels on the active model, it does send those road imperfections into the cabin. So you do get that odd thump when you go over particularly large potholes. Changing gear on a Golf feels like a surgical action compared to using this gearbox too. So whilst the 308 isn't the worst car to drive, it's not the best one either. The 308 has become a genuine contender in the family hatchback class and the latest update has kept it up to speed with its main rivals. It looks good, offers great boost space and economy and now has almost all the in-car tech you could wish for. It's not the best car to drive in the class, but you can still have fun with it occasionally, and it's impressively comfortable around town too.